Welcome to No Two Gays About It, the podcast that brings voice to the over 50 gay male. And this season is all about relationships. Today, we're going to discuss the relationship between the Gen Z and millennial gays and the older generations. And we're also going to take a look at our own relationships with growing older. Hello, I'm Tom Burke. And I'm Michael Foley. And we are just two gay guys who've had our share of relationships along the way. Mm. Some of us more than others. This just saying. True. Just saying. Don't point uh, any fingers. I'm pointing right at you, Mr. <laughs> Foley. So what's up with you? Before we get into it, tell us what's happening in the world of Michael Foley. Uh, so much, so much, so much. Bunch of trips to LA, did the Hollywood Bowl, did Outfest. Um, you know, just... Enjoying the summer. Um, Fantastic. And trying to get out of the heat just a little bit every now and again. Good. How about you? What's happening? Uh, well, the big news today, uh, this just happened about, I don't know, 15 minutes ago. I was having lunch out by the pool, and as I was eating, I see these bees dive bombing into the pool, which they always do. And so I run and get the net because I'm going to save the bees. And I pull these two guys out, and one of them flew over and stung me. And I'm like, fuck you, dude. I just saved your life. <laughs> All right, now you're dead. Serves you right. But it is swollen and it really hurts. So just a warning. If you see my face blowing up and I can't breathe, call help, please, would you? Do you have some, like, Claritin around just in case you have to, like, make a quick exit and pop a I pill do. or something? I mean, I'll okay. be fine. I, I don't right. have an issue with bees, but you never know, right? Um, All right, so let's get talking about these relationships that those people our age have with the millennial and Gen Zs. And we're going to start today with my absolute favorite segment of our show, which is called The Savage Side-Eye. And this is the moment where Michael and or I get to throw some side-eye, a little shade over at somebody who is bugging us or doing something we do not like. And I'm going to throw it over to you, Michael, because this is what started the entire uh, discussion today. So yeah. who's who's getting your side eye? So again, we're doing it a little different because uh, I was irked by someone who I saw on TikTok, um, a millennial um, who was doing a video telling us older folk that we should stop referring to ourselves as young at heart because we're not. Our hearts are old just like we are. <laughs> oh my God. And I was like, wow. oh my fucking God, that is so rude wow. and unbelievably judgmental because, you know, this is a 20-something who has no idea what's in store for him right. nor how he will feel as he gets older if he is blessed enough to get older. Right. Um, you know, and at 40 or 50, or 60, you know, believe it or not, you can still have the mentality of a 30-year-old. Your body may disagree with you completely and, you <laughs> yeah. know, begrudge you for attempting to do anything you would do in your 30-year-old body, but the mind doesn't change in regard to that. And then it just, you know, it got me thinking and it had us having a major conversation about what is this thing that is happening within our community, not just our community, but, you know, across the spectrum, but more so in our community with the younger gay millennials and the okay boomer mentality and sort of resenting either us for some strange reason, or maybe the fact that they might be getting older and it terrifies them to death. Well, there definitely is that. I mean, all right, I definitely am with you with throwing the side eye over at this guy because fuck you, I can have a young <laughs> heart if I want, right? Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't want to group everybody together. And I do understand that every younger generation rolls their eyes at the older generations and think they're morons and whatever. But something you just said, it's so true. It's within our community, 
to have the respect for the older gay men and women and everyone in the uh, LGBTQ community who have gone before you, I think that's what they're lacking. I mean, was he talking to specifically the gay men or to yes. everybody? Oh, he was. Well, oh, then, yeah. then yeah. that is a big fuck you. He is him. a LGBTQ influencer who has a very large gay audience. And um, he was speaking directly to us folk. And I look at other minority communities, you know, um, and this, this is where I start to question this, this resentment from the younger gays to the older gays is because in other minority communities, there's a reverence for the people who came before and a respect for the generations who came before. And they are honored within minority communities. You know, you take John Lewis, for example, Right. in the black community, how he is revered, and rightfully so. Why? Because he plowed the path that is allowing younger black men and women to walk on. And it seems like the younger gays forget that as recently as 20 years ago, in a lot of states in this country, homosexuality was illegal. You would go to jail. Well, Michael, is it that they forgot or that they just don't know? They um, haven't taken the time to learn the, their history. Is oh, that? It's obviously that they don't. I, that, that, that's a tough question because yeah. I'm sure some of them don't know. I'm sure some of them don't care because they, they stand where they are. And there was an interesting article I read about um, the difference in these communities, um, the youngers versus the elders. Um, and it was about a socialization where like, we didn't have the ability to go to the prom with the same sex date. You know, we didn't have that. And now right. it's a given. And so they were speaking of the older generations as sort of two birth dates, where it was our birth year, but then the year we came out was also very important to who we became. And because, you know, if you came out when you were 18 or 25 or 30, you sought the experience of the people who were around you. And it seems like the younger generation basically just is, they're socialized through social media. And so they tend to stick in a tight, tighter circle with right. younger gays. So whether it's ignorance or woeful ignorance, you know, that they just don't want to look, I'm not sure. Like I said, that's a tough question. Well, I I know I uh, had had a conversation. I work with a lot of younger people, and um, there was a conversation about the AIDS crisis, and this younger gay male, the Gen Z guy, was like, yeah, okay, like some people died. So what? Get over it. Mm. Like, are you freaking ass kidding me? Yeah. Like, do you know how much of our generation disappeared because of that? And yeah. it was just because we were being who we were. And all of the stuff that we all as a group and you, Michael, as being, you know, the, um, oh my God, what were you out there? Act an up activist. Those, an activist. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Act up activist. Yes. yes. People like yourselves who are out on the street fighting for the rights that these young kids have today and for them to flippantly be like, yeah, whatever, just some people died. So what? Get over it. I'm like, No. You get to do be you. You get to walk down the street holding hands with someone else because of us, because of what we yeah. did. And big question for you, like, I think what we've discovered is that it is this lack of respect for the history of this older generation, of what we have been through. Um, so my question to you is, when we were in our 20s and even 30s, did we have respect for the older generation of gay men out there? Without, without a doubt, I did. Um, and again, yeah. from everything I read from the time of our discussion till now, pointed the, I don't want to say pointed the finger because that sounds negative, but it looked at the occurrence of how we were socialized. And again, it comes out, comes around to that when we came out. And of course we saw sought people who had experience before us um, because there was no social media. 
there, you know, we had hard copies of Frontiers and, you know, um, Gay, Gay Star News or whatever it was that we, we happened to be reading. So I think there was more of a need and a want to seek out. Like, what were you, what did you go through? What was your coming out experience? Um, but that was just, that was a question I always asked people if I went out on a date when I was younger. Like, so when did you come out? You know, how was your family with it? I still do. Um, you know, are you close with your family? And what I think the younger generation doesn't recognize or is aware of that, you know, if they come out when they're 12, they could come out to their peers. And yes, they'll experience, you know, some discomfort or people who will turn their backs on them. But nowadays, it's not as difficult as it was for us. We couldn't come out when we were 12. We would have been brutalized. There are still men who are older than you and I who have still not come out because of the stigma that had been put on them when they were younger and they what they saw happening. I mean, just the fact, again, speaking about respect to the older generation, Stonewall and the fact that we all revere those people, those drag queens, everyone who was there for doing that. Yeah. And we weren't yelling, you know, saying to them like, oh, yeah, shut up. Quit saying you're young at heart, you big old queen or whatever. No, With your we were old like, heart. Yeah, thank you for doing what you did for <laughs> us. Or I'm so sorry that you had to live your life in the shadows. You know, yes, people of our age, some people are still in the shadows. Some people were in the shadows until they were in their 30s or 40s or even 50s. And as you said, these younger kids never don't even know what that means to be yeah. in the shadow, you know? So it's that I'm just so upset about the lack of respect for, you know, and I'm not thinking about myself particularly, but for this whole generation of the fight and and everything that we have gone through for them and then for them just to kind of dismiss us. Yeah, because you know? I, know, I know how much learning about other people's experiences who were, I didn't necessarily always listen because I think you do have to find certain things out on your own, but to take it in and to have respect for it, because I came out in New Jersey um, and it was probably <laughs> Sorry good, about that. <laughs> you know what? I, I have to tell you, it was probably the best, one of the best experiences in my life. Um, good. I was just kidding. Yeah, I know. Um, but there were, I think I mentioned, I've mentioned this before in, uh, on the show, there were like seven gay bars in Asbury Park, New Jersey. So it was just like, there was a community there. And I, yeah. I was so fortunate to find that. But I, the first trip I made into New York as an out gay young man, the first place I wanted to go to was a Stonewall Inn. Why? Because of the stories I heard. And because I realized it was such a huge part of why I was able to be doing what I was doing. And I th it's just sad to me that that's lacking nowadays with the younger gays, because right. they just, I, I mean, and I get it, every generation is, tends to be myopic when you're younger, and you know, it's, it's about me and my experience, but life is so much richer when you just allow the door to open up a little, and, and, and hear something from somebody else that you might not know, or never heard of, or never, you know, I was talking to friends about a kiss-in, that was, you know, part of an act up thing that um, I was part of. Oh, and I'm sorry. A kiss in. What did you think I said? <laughs> I was talking about a kissin. Kissin, like the kissin cousins. Oh, kissin. No, 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 kiss no. In. A kiss. A kiss in, in. like a sit in. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. But, you know, you would make out in places where it was going to be a shocking experience for some people just oh. to make them see us. Okay, that's awesome. I don't know about that. Tell me about that. Like, where would you do a kiss in? Um, the first one happened in New York, um, obviously, uh, down in the village. But then, you know, you would have people who were in outer communities who maybe you would get six people together and you would go to a mall and just stand in the middle of the mall and make out. Wow. Um, and yeah. just think about, like, how... That was such a momentous thing that you were doing. And now you see guys walking down the street holding hands like it's nothing. And let me add, let me add something to that. Yeah. And get arrested. 
because oh, that yeah. was that was considered lewd conduct. Wow. Right. You would you would get arrested and be charged or could be charged with a felony because you were kissing somebody in public who was the same sex. Well, you How's just that? Have... <laughs> Yeah, again, something that I think the younger generation needs to know. I didn't know about those kiss-ins. Um and I think I think it is part of our job to inform the younger generation to stop them when they're saying like oh just you're just being an old boomer with a, an old heart you know whatever be like wait a minute you know what um you need to know some things you know yeah. um I, I do have to jump just for a second then we'll come back to that but Yes, when we were younger, I did not have respect for every older gay man out there. And I'm sure you did not either. There were plenty of those creepy old gay guys who are leering and trying to touch younger guys and whatever. Like, no, they don't deserve respect. But in a general thing of, oh, gay boomer, <laughs> you have an old heart, whatever. No, let's stop doing that, right? Yeah, honestly, that was one of the most, I think, jaw-dropping things I'd heard in a very long time. And that's saying something, <laughs> what's happening in today's world, that somebody in our own community would bash yeah. his own community. The community that came before you and opened all of these doors for you. Like, no, it's not cool. That's not no. a cool thing to do. And but, again, you know, the, your, your friend who said, oh, so a few people died. Yeah. It's like not a few people died. This yeah. was our Holocaust. Right. We were losing people in ways that were beyond horrific. That there are images that will never leave me. Oh my God. Seriously, that suffering. was the worst time period. It was like, who's next? Now who? Yeah. Oh my God, did you hear about? Like, oh my God. And to have a world that was doing absolutely nothing, nothing yeah. to help. Right. So... Not to, I don't want to dwell on the, that horrible period, yeah, but no. what are, what are, besides just having this lack of respect for those of us older gay men out there, why, why else do you think this younger generation is so flippant towards us? Um, I do think a lot of it has to do with also the reality TV mentality that has sort of is pervasive in our society now that, okay. you know, the bitchier you are and the more controversial that you are, the more likes you're going to get. Well, that's definitely a true thing. I'm sure this guy has so many followers because they all tune in to hear, like, who's he bitching about now? Yeah. Oh, he's so funny, you know? And just FYI, he has over a million, so how's that? Well, you know, good for him. Yeah. But what's the underlying thing? You know, is he living in fear his own fear of growing old, of not being this influencer with a million followers. What happens a month from now when there's a younger guy yep. or that prettier. steps up? Yeah. Or a bitchier. Right. <laughs> I know? mean, that's what I think about these, you know, these influencers nowadays um, who are riding this wave, but don't realize that in a year from now, they will more than likely be irrelevant because, like you said, someone new will have taken their place. Yeah, totally. And then what one happens of, to them? That's the thing, right? So uh, one of the funniest, most, I don't know, important things I heard at a health club was in New York City when I was on the treadmill and this older, uh, new, very New York woman was talking to her friend and she's like, there's always going to be somebody who's got thinner thighs, <laughs> a better, you know, wardrobe, like... And it just made me think, like, it's true. There is yeah. always going to be that younger person showing up who has, you know, more followers, who is bitchier, who is funnier, who is... So then what happens to that guy who is making fun of the old gays? You know, he now is that old gay. And is it that? Is it that? Is it that fear of being an older person? Fear of not being an influencer anymore? Fear of not having that perfect body? I do think fear of aging is a huge part of it because, again, you know, our society is now so entrenched in this right. being young mentality that um, I think a lot of people fear aging. Well, we all, of course, we all fear that. But, but is that an excuse enough 
to be a to total be a bitch. dick. <laughs> yeah, all right, to be yeah. a bitch to, be to a bitch. the you know the men and women who have come before you and laid this path for you to walk freely down. No, it is not. Um, and I think it's our again. I think it's our responsibility to to educate these younger gay men. You know, I I always really felt in, that it was our job as the older uh, gay men to to set an example. I was I made sure that my husband Scott and I were always walking, you know, together in West Hollywood with our wedding rings on. Um, just to be an example, not that you have to do that in life, but just to say, oh, that's available to me. But I think it's also our job to be the educators to these young people. Like when that young guy said to me, it was just a few people that died, get over it. Like, no, 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 that's not what happened. Or this guy, you know, whatever he said about, you know, shut up about having a young heart. First of all, there were so many men our age who did not have the opportunity to be young. You know, I wasn't in my 20s running down the street going like, I'm gay and I'm, you know, living the life of this. No, I didn't get that. So if some older man now gets to be young, then let him, you know? Here's the thing, though. You're, you know, you're saying it's our job to educate. You can't educate somebody unless they... Want it. Want to. And I think that may be part of the formula that's missing here is that there's a lack of want that I see sometimes, especially from influencers or, you know, just going out in bars as uh, from the younger generation that is sometimes a little mm, hard to deal with uh, for me. It's the lack of want. Yeah. Um, but again, we're not talking about every young gay male. There are a lot of young gay guys who are very respectful and who do really know their history and want to, uh, you know, carry the torches that we've carried, uh, before them, which is amazing. But you're right. I think this whole social media thing and instant fame and, the bitchier and meaner and whatever, and I don't have to know anything about people that came before me because I'm so important right now. Like, yeah, okay, well, good luck to you, and let's talk in 20 years when you're... Uh, Yeah, there's a reality show right? to do in about five... Or You could actually probably do it now because social media has been so prevalent for such a long time. To go back and find these influencers who were all the rage five years ago and now... Who are you? Yeah, exactly, you know? right? Oh, well, so, you know. Well, well um, all right. So lack of respect, lack of wanting to be educated on their history and this fear of growing old. Um, what can we do about that? Not much, right? Just No, there's not, because, again, that's one of those things. I guess, you know, you keep talking. And which like is what the we're situ- doing. The situation that you were in, where your friend was like, or... or whoever it was. Yeah. Um, I can't imagine a friend saying that. It was no. probably an acquaintance. Um, where, oh, people, a couple of people died. Get over it. And you call them out. Yeah. You, 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 you put, you know, you call them out on the carpet. Because, like I said, I have, you know, I have younger friends. I have friends of all generations. And when they say something stupid like that, I don't let it ride. It's like, oh, no, wait a minute. First of all, you don't have the right to say something like that because you don't know where I walked. Right. You just don't. So um, I think it's hugely important that we do sometimes that we're willing to have a conversation um, that may be a little bit uncomfortable initially, but anytime I have those conversations, they always wind up being like these really awesome talks where each of you knows a little bit more about each other. So let's, let's push, you know, everyone out there just to be a little bit more open and have a conversation regardless of how uncomfortable it may be. Well, Michael, that's exactly what we're doing here. We started No Two Gays About It to bring our voice out, to let this generation of men over 50 be heard again, you know, because again, so much happening in 
because of the influencers and in social media, it's of that younger gay male, that 20 and 30 year old voice. So we're doing our part. We're here talking and we want everyone out there to join our conversation with us and, and let us know your thoughts about that. But I want to take this a little bit farther um, because, yes, these younger gay men um, are f- some of them are fearing when they're not the most important person in the room anymore. That's not just happening with these younger gays. There's a lot of gay men our age who yes. are also fearful of being older, of accepting who they are now. Uh, I sure, I, I know, I mean, you you go to the bars far more than I ever do, and I know you see that probably a lot more out at the bars, those older gay men who are clutching onto their youth, right? Yes. Um, <laughs> I do. And uh, that's, see, that's a tough one too, because fear is such a, it's, it's all of our, all of ours. No, how do you say that? It's our worst enemy, regardless of who we are. Sure. Oh gosh. Um, So, you know, to, to, to look and realize that this is this person's, you know, living in fear of getting older when the ironic thing is we're all on the same train. That if, you know, Every single person on the planet is now a second older than they were a second ago. Right. And to have that realization and to be okay with it, I, I think helps us live in our own skin. Um, and I get why a lot of people aren't, because again, especially, we've seen it in our lifetime, where there was this huge transition from, you know, respect your elders to, oh, you elders are stupid. Oh, you elders know. I watch commercials on TV and right. they irk the fucking shit out of me when I see this little bratty six year old, you know, talking to an adult like they're the parent and the parent is the child. And right. I'm like, how did that happen? <laughs> so there is this uh, uh, overwhelming sense of fear in, in our society that I think aging, you know, is this huge specter that looms over a lot of people. Well, I think it it's really prevalent in the gay community because we don't have those time markers that uh, um, they do in the straight community. Now, a lot more uh, gay men are have children, but you know, when you pass the torch on to the child, you know, now it's your turn to be the young, pretty yeah. person, whatever. And so, a lot of people in our generation don't have that torch to pass and they're just and they're clutching to it oh yeah like don't take this you know as they're dyeing their hair and wearing clothes that are way too young for them and um i mean we all want to be the hottest the sexiest the prettiest the you know the est thing we want it but we also have to live in reality wait wait wait. est what is that est yeah um the est disease i'm the hottest the sexiest the sickest the word you know uh, Everyone, that's one of the very few things I never caught. The EST disease. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I've I've had to take antibiotics for other things, but <laughs> oh yeah, we <laughs> know <laughs> that one is something I have no experience with. Maybe because you know I grew up being told I was fat and ugly. Um, well, I, I I I I look at that very differently. That was that's interesting. I've never heard that before. Yeah, oh, I came up with that. EST. I'm very all right. Whatever. All right. Uh, but no, there are those men out there who are just dressing like they are 23 and trying to pour themselves into these clothes that they shouldn't be in. And because they are clutching onto that torch that they they don't want to pass on to the younger generation. I, I, believe me, nobody, nobody in this world is more delusional than I am. You know, <laughs> I, I, I can't see myself right now. So I'm thinking that I look like that hot 28 year old, you know, mm. that I once was a thousand years ago. Should I throw a bucket of water on you? No, no, because okay, I get I'm it. You be. I got gotcha. you. When I leave the house, I do have to live in the world of reality, you know, and know that this is who I am. This is the best it's going to ever be today because gravity is going to pull it down farther tomorrow. You know, acceptance is very difficult. It's something, a, a journey that I'm on. I'm still trying to accept that I'm this age, that this is who I am, but please. Yeah, maybe on my outward appearance is this, but 
inside, I'm not, you know, a, a feeble old person. And so, yeah, my heart is young. And so please, young influencer from TikTok, fuck you and don't take that away <laughs> from me, you know? And again, if he is blessed enough to become our age, he's right. going to, he's going to, there's going to be this moment of, there's an epiphany where he's like, oh, I do, <laughs> I do get that because in my head, I still, again, my head thinks I'm 30, but my body is like, oh, hell no. Right. Yeah. Right. So yeah, don't take that away from us. Don't put down our young hearts. Let uh, let us be the example to you so that when you're our age, you too can have a young, joyous heart, you know? But um, if you do see us in like spandex and a oh, string please. tank top, then you have every right to call us out. I'm just, oh, I, I want to give them that permission. <laughs> oh God, yeah. That was bad in the 80s. It's, it just doesn't happen now. It's just, it's just wrong. Right. Uh, but I, I loved my spandex outfits Oof. when I went to take, you know, aerobics. I, every morning I was a, with Morgan Fairchild and her sister. There we were in our spandex outfits and we looked hot, you know. But yeah, please, no more. Um, all right. So are you feeling better about this guy you threw some shade at? Do we understand him a little bit more or are we still pissed off? I was initially pissed off and then I, on some level, I think I felt sorry for him. And now I, I have compassion for him after this conversation because I'm yeah. hoping, cause that's going to be a rough road to haul yeah. if that's your mentality. And I just, I just hope at some point he sees something just a little bit differently. Right. Um, that's the, you know, that's all you could hope for anybody who you see who is stuck in a judgmental or hateful groove that eventually they'll, somebody will kick the record player and the needle will come out and notice how I use that old reference. <laughs> Because, you know, they would say, what's a record What player? you say, Grandpa? The what? what? The phonograph? And you kick it, and the needle comes. What is, what, what's a needle? What's a needle? you crank needle? up? Sure. Yeah. Great. I thought you used a, I used a noodle, a needle to sew. What the hell? Awesome. No, that was actually great. So thanks. All right. You know what? Um, Michael and I have added uh, yet another fantastic segment to our show. We started out with our savage side eye. And we did a show last season, which was bringing the happy back to gay. And we had such great response to that. Uh, so many people really felt the joy that we were trying to bring back into the gay world, our gay world, uh, of those men over 50. So we decided to add this new uh, segment, which is the happy gay moment of the week. I'm going to step into this because I saw something that was so amazing this week. It truly was the happy gay moment, and it goes along with what we're talking about today. So Michael and I both live in Palm Springs, and I was at one of our local um, little cafe places where you kind of serve yourself. And this older gay gentleman... Um, had a cane and he was trying to carry his, it was like a bag with a cookie or something in it and his coffee. And he was going to sit at a table and he dropped the bag with the cookie in it. And, you know, I was like, Oh, I'm going to go. But as I was about to move this younger gay male, probably in his late twenties also ran and picked that up for him and he gave it to him and he helped him sit down and then my heart was so singing as I watched this younger gay male sit down with this much older gay man and just had this conversation and I'm gonna start crying at this moment oh, because that's awesome. the the joy in this older man's eyes and I don't know what they were talking about it doesn't really matter. It yeah. was just that there was this connection between the two of them. And just as we were, you know, I don't know, ragging on these uh, Gen Z millennial people who are not showing respect to the older generation, 
this young guy did. And it was a beautiful moment to watch. And it was definitely my happy gay moment of the week. Um, so while, yes, there are these influencers on TikTok who are being total bitches and putting us down for having young hearts, there are people like this in the world, this young man who sat and had this amazing conversation with this older gay man. So that was definitely a happy gay moment of the week for me. And it's, you know, that's an, I love that story. And it's a reminder to us maybe to cut them a little break, too. Right? Because it's not all of them. No, definitely. Oh, yeah. God, no. I, and yeah. we've been saying that along the way. It, yeah. We're not talking about everybody. We know yeah. that there are, you know, all kinds of people. Um, so, yeah. Um, so, kudos to that guy. And more power to you younger gay guys who do show respect to the older gay men who do, you know, want to learn from the history that you, that came before you. So that, that's really awesome. Um, so great. Thank you for sharing that. Thank you, uh, for listening to that. So, uh, you know, all of our fantastic listeners out there, we love hearing from you. Uh, we do want to continue to hear from you. Let us know your thoughts on the, millennial gen z kind of controversy of re no respect or let us know all about your relationships that you're having out there what are the relationships you want us to talk about um share with us join our conversation michael how can they get in touch with us you guys could reach out to us on all the social media platforms except i guess it's x now um, yeah, we're not formerly doing Twitter. So you can reach out to us on all of those other social media platforms um, at no two gays about it. And it's the number two. So no, the number two gays about it. And you could also hit us up on Gmail at no two gays about it at gmail.com. And uh, we're also on Patreon if anybody wants to join our family in a different way. And that is uh, Patreon forward slash no two gays about it. Um, and we're on TikTok. So Obviously, we're on TikTok. So find uh, us, hit us up. We'd love to. We would love to hear from you. And you know, like Tom said, your thoughts on you know this sort of generational rivalry that's happening at the moment, or any other topics that you guys want to hear. We're we're open to have a conversation about them. So yeah, we love hearing from you, and it's because of you that we're continuing our you know again this new season of ours about relationships. So. Uh, Please continue to join our conversation. And until next time, Michael. Until next time, Tom. Thank you, everybody out there for listening and staying with us. We just love doing this, and we hope you're loving it, too. Thank you. Bye. Bye.